everyone. Okay, so I think you can kind of figure out what this video is going to be out about, um, even if you didn't see the title, which most of you do, and that's why you click on videos, but you know what? I'm going to make this video anyway. Um, I went to see Bo Burnham last night and the night before. I'm trying not to get as emotional as I did in the other part of this video, part one. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that was a while ago. That was um, a few months ago. It was at least, I think, September or August or something. My hair was blue. I don't know. Um, my hair's grown out a while. I didn't make a video since my last one, which was um, 21 Pilots, which was only a few months ago, and I only uploaded it, I think, like, not even a month ago because I had no time. But I'm making this video now because I have the time and because the lighting's good. I'm currently in my mom's boyfriend's house because we're cleaning for Thanksgiving this week. And I thought this would be a good time to make a video. So I'm going to paint the picture of me seeing Bo Burnham twice. Which is something I didn't say in the first one because it wasn't happening at the time. Um, I was only going to see him on Thursday. It is currently Saturday. Um, and I got offered tickets to the Friday show, which I'm so, so glad I did. And I'll tell you why. Yes, the Thursday show, I went with my friend Sienna. You all know who she is, hopefully, if you've been watching me for a while. Let's go. So we got there at 6.30. Doors didn't open until 7.15, we got to wait inside so it wasn't as cold, at, I mean it wasn't that cold out to begin with, but we got in there, we're like second in line, got our merch, um, also please excuse me if you do see the fuzzies, I was wearing my robe earlier because I was freezing, um, so we got there, we got our seats, and everything went really well, the only problem was there was this drunk woman right in front of us, not right in front of us, but like front left, we were in the center of the orchestra, my mom was in the orchestra pit, Great seats, asshole of a woman, um, but we'll get to her. So, show starts, and we lose our shit. There's the announcement for no, no flash photography, there's an announcement for no video. Of course I took videos. Who wouldn't take videos? You gotta do what you gotta do. So, lights went down, whatever. Adam Newman came on. He made fun of the drunk woman. I remember at one point Adam was like, I don't know if as an opener I'm allowed to kick people out because he was being heckled by this one ugly drunk 50 year old woman with her equally ugly 40-ish year old friend. Why they were there for Bo? No idea. Neither of them had kids. Neither of them looked like they wanted to be there. They kept yelling, Bo yo, Bo yo, over and I was just like, I'm gonna punch you in the throat. I was hoping Bo would kick them out. He didn't. He heckled, well he didn't heckle, he responded to them like once. But that was so unimportant to me, I was so focused on the show. Bo came out, and the thing with comedy shows is there's no intermission between the opener and the headliner. So lights went down, Bo's show started with the crazy light thing, lots of strobe lights in his show by the way. Absolutely insane, everything was perfect. I felt like I looked at him, and he looked at me like we had a moment. But he can't see shit. Although the house lights came up the second night and he was talking to me and I was like, <laughs> yeah, but I didn't do that. Yeah, um, I keep saying the word incredible. Sorry if that annoys anyone. It's like my go-to word when something is amazing or fantastic or incredible. Yes. We waited, I think, three hours after the show before we were told by one of Bo's crew members that he wasn't coming out. I was sad. I was very upset, but I wasn't like, to the point where I was crying, like I usually do when I can't meet someone, I'm usually like, oh no, tears. But I didn't cry, because I had another day. I'm ready to go, I am pumped, I'm doing it, everything's great. Um, I get through the day and then my heart just sinks, because um, my friend's dad, who was going with uh, us this time, I guess, like it was both her parents, and he was late coming home, but like really late coming home. We got to the venue before the doors opened anyway, but I was just really nervous. I got so worked up, and because I have major, major anxiety when it comes to crap like this, like punctuality and all this other shit. So I got really nervous and tense, and I was just like, what if we don't make it? What if, what if we miss everything? I don't know what would be missing. The show doesn't start till like 9, 8.45, I don't know, but Everything went fine, we got there. 
I got a poster. We got there. It was amazing. Um, bow show started again. Uh, the only problem with this one was the guy sitting in front of me kept moving his head back and forth. Blah, 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 and I was just like, are you on some sort of drug? No, because like he was like looking around and I was just like, dude, show's that way. Pay the fuck attention. Other than that, it was great. Um, I could see, again, the only thing was the security guard was like right there. And I want to take videos, but the guy's head was moving so I had to keep going. Like, you know what I mean? But I got more videos this time. It was incredible. And oh my god, I'm annoying myself. And then, oh boy. You know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We waited, we found the bus. Uh, we didn't find the bus the day before, but like I'm at the stage door and I'm just like looking around and I see it. The front of the bus is like at the beginning of the alleyway of the, the two buildings. And I'm like, Caitlin, look, it's the bus. Someone's down the stairs, hi mom. There's the bus. So I'm like, all right, let's go. I'm not waiting by the stage door. It didn't come out of the stage door. It came out of this fucking bus. I was right. So we wait, and there are like 15 other people there. First night, he didn't meet anyone. Second night, I had hope. It was his last night in Boston. 15 people's not a lot to meet. So we waited for three almost hours, maybe. It was like past 11.30 when he finally did come out. And he came out of his bus. It was like this big dramatic buildup because everyone was like packing up the bus. Doors were opening, closing. There was this one white van that just kept driving around us, teasing the shit out of us. I was like, is he in there? Because the windows were majorly tinted. Um, and in his bus, his mom goes in and out. Yeah, his mother. Because, he, I mean, he's from around Boston, so his family's here. So his mom's coming in and out of the bus, family friends coming in and out of the bus. Adam runs a few times past the bus. I'm like, can we get pictures with you? He's like, I gotta go on the bus. And I'm like, for what reason? Why? Bo somehow gone on his bus before anyone got outside to him. Comes out at 11.37-ish, 11 something, I don't care. And no one's doing anything. They were all like shocked. So I, he comes out and goes like this. So I just go, woo, as a joke. And he laughs at me. He laughed at me. A comedian laughed at me. I think my life is set now. So... We get in line, we're closer to the end of the line, but there are like 10 people, so it goes by wicked quickly. He's talking to everyone, he's being super nice to everyone, shaking their hands, asking them if they like the show. Gets to our point, where we're ready. Caitlin says, oh my god, you're so tall, as he's shaking her hand, and I'm just like... She didn't just say that. She promised herself she wasn't gonna say that, and she said it. It's fine, though. I mean, it's not the worst thing you could say to a six foot five man. I mean, he probably hears it all the time. But I told him that I tried to wait yesterday, yesterday Thursday I said yesterday and he's like oh well I'm glad it's working out tonight I'm just like me too and he shakes his hand and I told him he was incredible I actually did say incredible that time I did so I had to say it in the video just to give you a thorough and accurate description of what I said and how it went down but like he okay so we got together and it was like Caitlin was on his left and I was on his right and usually I'm on that side of the celebrity if you I haven't noticed in all the pictures that I take with people I meet, I'm on that side all the time. It's like my side. Yes. So I get on that side. And we the guy takes four pictures and his hair is different in every single one. So here here you go. Right. You can see the giant smile on my face and how I'm like clutching on him, holding me just as tightly as I was holding him and I think I lost like feeling in everything but that shoulder because like he was just, oh my god this shoulder it wasn't even that late it was like 11 45 ish not even like 11 30 maybe so we had finally gotten to meet him and he was like holding us really tightly and he said thanks for coming and he oh it was so nice so I called Sienna afterwards and she didn't even say hi she was just like you just met Bo Burnham didn't you and I lost it and it was Probably one of the most ridiculous moments of my life. Uh, this guy in front of the Schubert was like, is she okay? And I was like, I'm more than okay. He was like, oh, that is some really fucking happy, that's a really fucking happy girl right there. And I was like, yeah. And I was crying on and off, like in front of Caitlin. I kept hugging her and I was the happiest person alive. And I'm trying not to cry now. I cried in the first part. There's no more crying right now. 
But the fact that I got to meet him and tell him that he did really well and he thanked us for coming, I mean, it was, oh, it was so good. Everything was so good. There's nothing went wrong the second day. I mean, the only problem was the jokes weren't as new, but like, I mean, they were so fucking funny. He was incredible. Um, so if you haven't seen his show, go fucking see the show. I will put some clips at the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoy them if you didn't go to a show and want to know what it was like from my perspective. Um, so if, the, if you have something that means as much to you, I hope you get to fulfill. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this video of me kind of recapping what Make Happy was like without ruining everything. Now I'm going to ruin everything for you. Here are the videos. Bye. Hello audience, thank you for coming. You are here because you want to laugh and you want to forget about your problems. Woo! You cannot allow it. Oh. You should not laugh. You should not forget about your problems. The world is not funny. We are all dying. The world is not funny. 12% of the world's population does not have access to clean drinking water. Oh, this is great. This the world is not funny. Guy Fieri owns two functioning restaurants. <laughs> the world is not funny. I went to one of them. So then, now that we understand the context, now that we realize how terribly unfunny the world is, let's do this. out the words and the phrases they can use to pander to their audience and they list the same words and phrases off sort of mad lip style in every song raking in millions of dollars from actual working class people you know the words you know the phrases dirt road a cold beer a blue jeans a red pickup a rural man simple adjective and no shoes no shirt, no shoes, you didn't hear that. Sort of a mental type of... I walk and talk like a field man, but the boots I'm wearing cost three grand. I write songs about riding tractors from the comfort of a private jet. I can sing in Mandarin, you can still not Mandarin, Uncle dear. Chasing trout, a cold blood line with the logo facing out. Hear that southern mandolin, that's textbook mandolin. I don't buy any brands that I rarely use. I don't like dirt. One verse, one chorus in the bag. Now it's time to talk to the ladies. I'm hoping my southern charm offsets all these rapey vibes I'm putting out. Good girl in a straw hat with her arms out in a cornfield. That is a scarecrow. <laughs> that was a human woman. A cold night, a cold beer, a cold jean. Strike that last one. And when you, I hope you're big with me. Subtextual. We go to bed, get those off. So I take your country girl clothes off. I put my hands on your body. It feels like pain. It's a fucking scarecrow again. Like crazy Mandarin. Fuck your ears on Mandarin. I write songs for the people who do jobs in the towns that I've never been to. Be the lies of Jerry Mandarin. Tolerate my Mandarin. You got a beautiful mouth. I got a beautiful Y'all dumb motherfuckers want a key change. Word for
bless you. <laughs> now it's become, at least in the mainstream, a symbol of misogyny. Hey, girl. <laughs> gay panic. Ah, gay! <laughs> Fiscal irresponsibility. Take that suit, bitches. Say, 50 bucks. You will not remember that callback when it cost $50. <laughs> Horrible. Deplorable. Adorable. No. <laughs> and I figured. If you can't beat him, join him. Oh, get the club up VIP. I gotta fake my stash and fake ID. I look like Wooly Willy with a really Wooly Willy. And I fight past the mouncer. That's my ex. I flex the mouncer. Wowser. Look at all the bows. Huh? Looking for a ride on bows. Huh? Spot a little Latina. Who's so big? Oh, I don't person to go. We go to it. records, kind of. <laughs> for all my people still living on the streets, I want to tell you I'm doing this for you. My success is literally your success, figuratively. <laughs> now you may be thinking, hey, if you really believe that, why not use some of the money to help rebuild the neighborhood instead of putting spinning rims on a fur jet ski? Good call. <laughs> to those cynics, Look right at the top of their necks, their faces. Faces. <laughs> Say hey. <laughs> Course is coming up. Single every single day. Thank you, Boston. Good night. Thank you. So I was like, don't mention that on stage. I already fucked it up. <laughs> Give it up for Adam Newman. Wasn't he Jewish? <laughs> Walking around, I got no one to talk to. There's everyone. 
And then there's just me If I could change, don't you think that I'd do it? God only knows why he cursed me to be a straight white man <laughs> I state my problems, other people roll their eyes. Three trips to the mall, zero khakis in my side. I've never been the victim of a random search for drugs. But you can't say my life is easy until you've walked a mile in my Uggs. <laughs> The gays want kids. <laughs> Can't you just leave us alone and also no to the things you asked for? <laughs> They're being greedy and they know it. <laughs> this doesn't work in Boston. I don't know where it's going to work. <laughs> A blue state that is racist somehow. Isn't that funny? Everyone thinks that I've got it easy and Just cause it's true Doesn't mean that it's right <laughs> Pull up a chair Put down your pitchforks Give me a chance To show you what it is like To be a straight white man The church has never made me Feel ashamed of who Quiznos that Gmail doesn't mark as spam. My country's constitution was handwritten by my race. My wife bought me a brand new iPhone with an iPod Touches case. Case doesn't fit that <laughs> Blacks want not to be called the Blacks. <laughs> Sorry. Did you just leave us alone? Also no to the things you asked for. I apologize, that was bigoted. <laughs> I'm gonna move on now. Um, I got interrupted the other day while I motherfucking <laughs> sing this. I really don't. God damn it. Hey, whoa, guess what? I'm a faggot. It's not funny. Turn the lights off at least, people. It's funny to you people. Turn it off. Turn the track off. Why was it on a record player? <laughs> Got a record player back there. <laughs> you know, it's one thing to make that, but to press it onto vinyl is a whole other thing, right? It's gonna outlive me. 
Just to be clear, I conceived, wrote, and executed the entirety of that bit. Do not give those dumb fucks any credit. <laughs> Guys, the Adams first started gentrifying it and stripping it of all of its value. Yeah, that poor, keep rapping about beer pong, dude. Cool. <laughs> I like hip hop because I like words. I like poetry. And hip hop feels like a way to condense a lot of words and poetry into a short amount of time. There are, there are artists that still do that. Kendrick Lamar, very word heavy. But most hip hop for me, and it is for me, has traded in the beauty of words and poetry for beat fetishism. It's where you make a sick beat and then you wrap anything underneath it. And people lose their minds. I'll give you an example. Is there a sick beat back there for me? Oh, shit. I didn't rip off his dick, and I'm now not talking into a severed... The show is a series of discreet bits. That one's over. I know what you want. 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 You want a guy that's sweet, a guy that's tough, a feminist who likes to pay for stuff, the kind of guy that gets along with your friends without being attracted to any of them. A good boy, a bad boy, a good bad boy, a half good, half bad, half boy. Loves your brother, sends it in, but not weekend. Is a great love and calls your mother on the weekend. Now you might think that this guy only exists in your mind. But guess what? You're right. If you want love, lower your expectations a few. Because Prince Charming would never settle for you. If you want love, just pick the guy and love him. And if he's got a thing for feet, say fuck it, sweet me off and now the good thing is that uh, at least men have very realistic expectations for women. He said, sarcastically setting up a second verse in a comedy song. You want a girl that's nice, a girl that's not Obsessed with her looks, but is insanely hot The kind of girl that you can show to your folks Loves the movies they can like and always laughs at your jokes A real girl, a hot girl, a really hot girl A brand new, really hot, real doll What's to impress you doesn't care if you notice And only ever uses you to take a throw with Now you might think that this girl only exists in your mind But she's real, but last week she died you want love, lower your expectations a lot. You might think your dick is a gift, I promise it's not. You want love, just pick a girl and love her. Then whip out your dick and let the girl you love decline the offer. I don't want a neat freak, I don't want to slob somebody with bad head in a ditch. We shouldn't fight to stay together just to fight again. It's over. We need to 
take a break from us to make us right again And even though it's not gonna go any further I swear I don't regret a second of it And when the dust has settled I hope We can still be friends Then I said Eat a dick Eat a dick Eat a fucking dick like this Put on your dick eating gloves I think I made the right decision. Okay, look, all right, you're angry. I can see that, but you don't need to make this harder than it has to be. I try to speak to you, but you won't listen. Eat a dick. Hold on, please, just let me pick you. Oh my god, honestly, are you fucking five? I'm trying to talk this out. You refuse to even listen to me. I, I'm saying how I'm feeling. Okay, and then you're saying, eat a dick over and over again. Does that seem mature to you? No, it doesn't. See, I'm thinking the two is. I got my father's temper. I'm emotionally inarticulate. So rather than being honest and vulnerable, I'm going to click switch because I'm perfect inside. That's what I'm hiding. So eat a dick.